Hello and welcome to your Fairy God Mentor. This is the show that inspires, encourages, educates, and supports expected couples who desire to confidently navigate pregnancy, birth, and finding balance in an unbalanced world. I am Angie Taylor, the mother of nine with two degrees in natural health. I'm also a birth insider, knowing the ins and outs of the birth industry and all of the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've worked with expectant couples since 2003 in a variety of roles, including birth educator, birth doula, home birth midwife, breastfeeding support, and life coaching. Sit back and enjoy hearing about all the things you never knew you never knew. Today I'm speaking with Tammy Johnston, who is the hold your hand and kick your rear business coach. She has been working with solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, and small business owners for over 20 years to help them build sustainable and successful businesses. Tammy believes that business done right, honestly, ethically, and morally has the power to make the world a better place for our customers, our families, and our communities. She doesn't promise a magic bullet because there is no such thing, but she does teach all the basic foundational skills you need to first survive and then thrive with your business. She only deals in real, practical, put it to use training and advice that has been tested in the battlefield. What you learn from her includes mindset, business habits, marketing, the importance of having an advisory team, all about financials, systems, cash flow, and profit. Hello, Tammy. I am so glad to have you on this episode of Your Fairy God Mentor. Um, how has your day been going so far? Well, I'm up, in, I'm up in Canada and it's winter, so we're a little frosty, but oh, we will yeah. adjust quickly. <laughs> <laughs> we will, we will that. adjust. It is it is winter. We've we've been getting off pretty easy <laughs> lately. So I will I will take the bit of cold that we are getting now. I like your attitude. It's good to have that type of attitude because I know that you guys are in the negative uh, temperatures already. So as we've been getting to know one another, um, first off, I love what you do. I love how you help to take the that small business owner and get them where they want to be. Um, and teaching them the things that they don't even know they don't know. Um, so important. Um, but I would like for people to hear a little bit about your story of how you got to where you are, because I know that you started your own business and then had a baby. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a very exciting two years because I got fired from a job that I absolutely hated, which was a good thing, because if you hadn't fired me, I would have just and gone and gotten another job I would have hated very soon, um, within about a week, because I was already interviewing and things like that. So when he fired me, I was like, I'm free! It's wonderful! And then we started going through the moments of terror and stuff, because I was raised by an employee mindset, and I've been an employee for a few years, and, and I'm going, yes, I'm free, but there's going to be no more regular paychecks coming in. Ooh, we, we were going through all of that. And one of the reasons why I was able to go, I'm free and I'm, I'm starting my business and stuff is because my husband and I, we were starting to talk about starting our family. And I didn't want to be doing the daycare and all of this and having to get up at 5.30 in the morning so you can get the baby ready and drop them off at daycare. And then you go into work and then you have to rush back and pick up the baby from daycare. And then you're rushing around to do all this stuff and you're missing out on all of that. And I'm going with my own business. I can set it up to work around my life. And, and it has. So I started my business. I got pregnant. So I had to build a business and a baby together. Um, I'm insane. I took 30 hours of mat leave. I worked up until noon the day I had her. Um, I missed teaching one class that day because that was literally the day I gave birth. She was seeing clients with me before she was two days old. She did her first class with me when she was a week old. And she did her first trade show when she was two weeks old with me. So we just like literally, here we go. Love so, that. 
we just always went through everything. I literally had clients that went through the pregnancy with me and they'd rub my belly for good luck. And, <laughs> and then when I'd show up after I had her and I've got, I've got my purse, my diaper bag, my, my briefcase with my laptop in it and the, and, and the baby car carrier. <laughs> and they say, can we help you? No, I'm balanced. Please don't throw it off. Because if you mess this up, I'm going to tip. And so we'd come in and I'd, I'd, I'd just take her. They said, can we cuddle the baby? Oh, yes, you can. Here you go. So my daughter, like no, like pretty much every baby goes through that, that stage where they're kind of afraid of strangers. My daughter never did that because as long as she could hear me and, and she was with me and all this stuff, she's like, oh, I'm getting cuddles. This is a good thing. She learned to sleep anywhere. She's just always been good to go and so we made it work and I, I was pizza mom and if they need if she needed a, a volunteer to go on a field trip I could do things like that um if I needed if she got sick and I had to bring her home from school and stuff I could deal with that so that was one of the things that I wanted for starting my business I'm going I want it to work around my life where a job you have to make your life work around it right right and I, I love the fact that that helps to set a, a really good example for the up and coming parents. Um, I know another, a number of couples that are like, no, there's no way that we can start a business. We're, we're trying to get pregnant. We, you know, we just, how would you do that with a baby? And now they've heard that's how you yeah. do that with a baby. Um, I have a son who is, um, he'll be 16 in February and his first year of life, he attended 40 births with me um, mm -hmm. as I was doing birth doula work. And um, there were a number of babies that mom was wondering if this baby is ever going to come into the world. And he would babble something that we couldn't yep. <laughs> understand. But apparently, the tiny human still in utero did because they were out fairly quickly after he did their, his little pep talk with For them. them. It's safe to come out, little one. It's <laughs> scary out here but you know just so many nurses and doctors would see me with him in a sling and I was blessed to have teenagers at that time so I always had a mother's helper with me um so if he didn't need me or I felt like he wasn't getting comfortable with me because he wanted down I would just pass him off to one of my daughters whichever one was with me and they would take him out to the waiting room and they would go and play but um I think it's really important for all women to understand that we can do a lot, even with a child in oh, tow. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, because, because like I said, I literally straight through with my daughter. And people said, why didn't, why didn't you take time going? I was just starting to get my business going. If I had stopped, I would have lost all of that. Right. And I'm going, and part of why I wanted to do this is to show that it can be done. So like I said, my daughter, it wasn't, it wasn't jarring or anything for her. Oh, I'm just out with mom. And I was the food. My daughter wouldn't take a bottle. She wouldn't take a suit. You try to give my daughter a soother, she would projectile vomit on you. So I was the food. It was fresh from the source. And I had an hour and a half, two hour window. So a lot of the time before she was like six months old, she just come with me and I just cover up with a blanket, not because I'm ashamed or embarrassed, but I'm going, you got a job to do. I don't want you like looking all over, <laughs> like get to work. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and and she was she was really good. I think I had to burp her like three times in her entire life because she'd literally latch, she'd wrap her arms around and just be I I'd see these poor moms because I had quite a few friends that had babies like all around the same time. Like there was something in the fountain water at church or something after the renovations because everybody got pregnant. And I'm seeing them and it's taking them 45 minutes to an hour to feed because the baby's not paying attention. They're constantly delatching and looking all over going, no, 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 we got stuff to do. Pay attention. <laughs> and then when she started getting older and like getting to that crawling stage and stuff, um, I had a business partner when I first started and we would go out to see clients and we would leave my daughter with her husband because my husband worked nights. And that's usually when I saw my clients and things like that. So we would go over to her place. I would feed, leave, leave Ayla with Caleb. And then we would go do the appointment. Then we come back. I'd feed, do the diaper, whatever we need to do, go do the next appointment. So we just figured out ways to do it. And then I started having more clients coming to my house. So we just do that. So Ayla learned how to answer the door and play like hostess. Well, come down to my mom's office. Can I offer you anything? So she was great. 
we just we just learned how to do it. Right, right. And it be, just became part of her life. Yeah. You know, this is just what mom does. And so it's no big deal. And of course, she never felt like she was second place because she was involved from the very beginning. That's very huge. Um, I know sometimes my kids get a little frustrated. Mom, you're putting your clients before me. And I'm just like, wait a second, dude. Do you know how many years you had me just all to yourself because I wasn't helping other people and I am preparing for an empty nest. So I may have five of our nine at home plus a grandchild, but in very short order, this house is going to be empty. Um, And I want to be prepared for that. I want to have things to do, you know, uh, mm-hmm. don't want to just be puttering around the house trying to figure out, well, what am I going to do today? What am I going to clean today? Um, I have things to offer the world. I have um, knowledge and education um, to well, put out there. Yeah. And and for, my, and for my daughter as well, because like I said, she was just always part of it and doing different things. And, and when I was working and doing things, like if I had a client come in and I'm going, okay, I need you to vote. Like we taught her how to tell time really quickly and we know how long movies are. And that's how long it would normally do mm-hmm. to see see clients or no, mommy really needs to focus and work on this. So if you watch Beauty and the Beast or Little Mermaid, when that's done, mom will be done her stuff. And then what do you want to do? Do you want to play with mom? Do you want to go to the park? What do you want to do? And as long as I kept my word, it was all good. And then because she's always been part of this and has had to learn to be resilient, like I feel bad for the parents that, their kid has to be home at seven o'clock every night. The house has to be perfectly dark and quiet because if there's a bang, the child is off and crying. I'm going, you are setting yourself up for a boatload of pain. Like my daughter could sleep through an earthquake. Yep. But she was a lot more confident in school. She would ask questions and participate and do all of that where I saw a lot of her classmates were so shy and, and quiet and timid because for lack of better words, they lived in a bubble. Yeah, I completely understand that. We saw that a lot when we lived in Mexico. And our son, our youngest, turned four while we were there. And of his classmates, he was the only one who knew how to dress himself at age four. Yeah, I can't I can't believe that. My daughter was, so I've always been working on teaching her, like I'm going, my job as your mom is to teach you how to be a self-sufficient adult. So you're going to learn how to do chores. You're going to learn how to do laundry. You're going to learn how to cook. And I've been teaching her grocery shopping and paying attention to prices and, and the tricks and stuff that they pull. And she complained a little bit. I'm going, no, like I said, when you hit uni- like college, because she's going off in September, you're going to be the rock star. Because I know so many kids that go off to university and stuff, they can't make toast. And I said, they're going to think you are just like the bomb. And she was in junior high and she came home and she said, mom, you're right. The kids that I go to, they don't know how to do anything. We were talking about the stuff we do at home and I'm telling them the stuff that I do. And it's a fraction of the chores that I had when I was a kid. And she says, mom, they're blown away. They don't know how, they don't know how to do anything, mom. Thank you. Yep. Yep. This, these are the years when they start to show that gratitude, you know, we we wait for it and we wait for it, we wait for it. And then they finally start realizing how well you prepared them for the world. Yeah. Our oldest went into the Navy when he was 18 and at the end of boot camp. So when he's in boot camp, we have no contact with him whatsoever. No. But then when we went up there for his graduation, um, afterwards, he shared with us what happened the night before. So the night before is when everybody got the patches that needed to be put on their uniform before the next morning. Ah, Our son was the only one who knew how to sew. So <laughs> he's sitting there and he's putting his patches on his uniform. And all of a sudden, all of the guys are bringing him their shirts and his and their patches and asking him to, will you do this? Will you do this? I said, so did you set up a sewing circle and teach them or did you do it for them? Yeah. And he said, well, it was faster to just do it for them. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> but you could have taught them a new skill. <laughs> well, there's so much you see, you, you, you see the advertisements and stuff for these classes called adulting. And, and I'll point them out to my daughter and I'm going, you already have that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yep. I already taught you that. I already taught yeah. you that. I already taught you that. <laughs> And then with her seeing 
seeing me always having my business and how do we go about doing things and stuff. Um, she's very, very interested in that and asks questions and is looking at it because the world that you and I grew up in does not exist for our kids. Right. No, it doesn't. And and we're seeing more and more people, thanks to current global events, we're seeing more and more people looking at how do I start a business? Do I even know anything that I could make money teaching um, or doing for somebody else? Mm-hmm. And so... I'm sure that you're seeing an influx of small business owners with that confused deer in the headlights look like, um, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, What are all the pieces? What are, what are in the headlights? And then there's a lot that they're they're They've got a great idea for a product or service and they're all excited. And then they don't get the deer in the headlight look until they've been in it for a little while. And they start realizing, Oh my goodness, there is so much stuff. I had no clue about because they're 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 getting beat up all over the place right. by life. So there's some that are that are holding off because they're going. I know there's a lot of stuff that I don't know and I don't even know where to look or anything like that. And then they'll start going for for different pieces. And you can get all sorts like there's tremendous courses and great coaches and stuff. I see them all over social media because I see all the ads. And not saying that there's anything wrong with what they're doing, but they're allergists. They're your specialist. They're for people that, okay, they've already, they've already survived the first two years. Because the big thing is most businesses that start do not survive the first two years. And it's rarely because they don't have a good product or service or anything like that. It's simply that they do not have the basic foundational business skills that they need. And they didn't even know about it. But once they've made it past the two-year marker, or they're into the five or plus mark, that's when a lot of those coaches can be really good because now, okay, yes, we're good. How do we level up? How do I improve this? But if they don't have the basics, you're just throwing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars after something that you're not ready for. Like it's like to, your, your, your son is talking to the little one to come out and they're going, okay, well, here's your coach that's going to teach you all about T-ball. Can I get my umbilical cord off first? order of operations. And and the basics are the same. Doesn't matter what the business is, doesn't matter what industry, doesn't matter product or service, mindset, habits, marketing, advisory team, financial systems, cash flow, profit. You have to have all eight of those. And if you're missing any of them, your chances of survival are almost nil. Totally agree. And, And I know what I run into right now is the conversation with high ticket and high price coaches that, you know, you you let them know, I don't have that right now. I'm not interested in going into debt or further debt for my business. Um, And then you get the the hard sales pitch. Oh, but you should be investing in your business and leverage your credit card. And I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter what words you use. You're still asking me to go into debt. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that's, I don't want to go into debt. Um, so and, and not just into debt for, for big ones. And I'm totally with you. I just finished doing a big, big course. It was just, a, I paid for the little cheapy one to start. And I knew that it was going to be a push for his next programs and stuff like mm-hmm. this. And he's a big name and it was good stuff. I got a few things out of it that I needed, but, but a lot of it was, no, I've already got that. That's not a problem. Cause I've been in business for over 20 years now. And yeah, we get we get to the big sales pitch thing and it's yeah, you need to invest and it's it's like thousands of dollars and all of this stuff and the 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 guilt and if you're not willing to put this money in you're you're going to fail and I'm just going I hate slimy aggressive tactics and I'm going cuz I was through this group for over uh for over a week And like I said, it was good stuff, provided lots of value, but he's working with a lot of people that should be working with me and he should be working with people more like me. So I I, I had a real disconnect there. I'm going, yes, you are providing some of the things, but you are missing so much of this other stuff. And yes, you're a great salesperson and not saying there's anything wrong with your program, but for lack of a better word, how I was feeling is he's preying on some of these people. And that just, that roasts my chestnuts. <laughs> I'm with you there. I, I am. So I'd like for you to, at this time, to 
talk a little bit more about what you offer, especially for the small business owner that is just starting out. They they need the foundation, but they don't even know what materials make up that foundation. Yeah. Um, because I'll tell you, with my business, you know, as a as a midwife, it's really easy to know what the foundation is. It's really easy to get all of that set up. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I'm right now a midwife on hiatus. And so I'm taking all of the other stuff and intermingling it with life coaching and finding that I myself, there's part of that foundation Mm -hmm. that I'm missing. Um, And I don't want to go into debt. I don't want to use a credit card. I want to be able to afford it and pay mostly cash um, whenever possible. And and Um, there's times where you do go into debt, but question is how much? And before I, before I do anything, even if I'm not going into debt, you always need to be very, very conscious in your family, personally, and in your right. business. How are you invest, investing your money? Because everything is, an, is, is an investment or it's a waste. And my, my big thing is, what is the return on investment? How much business do I need to bring in in order for to pay for this and then start making a profit off of it? And I've, I've had some things that I'm going... If for some businesses, I could totally and completely see this being, yeah, totally and completely worth it because I only need to make one or two sales. And if I can't learn enough from that to make one or two extra sales, then there's a problem with me. And then there are some, it's like, um, I have to make like 15,000 sales just to pay for you. No, it's not worth it. <laughs> not worth it. Right, right. Exactly. I, I don't believe that it's really ever worth putting your your family at risk. No financially to do something. Um, There's always a different way to do it. Sometimes you just have to ask the question of the universe, how do I make XYZ happen? Um, And then let it respond to you. A bit of good news with that. That's why women run businesses are typically three times more successful than men. You don't see us hitting the billionaire mark anywhere near as much. Because we're boring and we're consistent and we will take the very calculated risks. But what has been shown through the statistics, through what venture capitalists and stuff have gone through, is women, if you if you think about it as a baseball game, we will rarely hit the home run, but we will get around those bases over and over a single, a single, a single, a single, a single, because we're going. Um, yes, I need to get around the bases, but if I strike out, are my kids going to eat? Right. So we play it a lot more consistent where men, even if they've got families, it's, they've got a different way of looking at it. They'll swing for the fence. And if they connect, great, wonderful, it's a win. And if they didn't, oh, well, where women were not willing to take the same amount of risk on the downside. So we might miss some of the upside. Like I said, single, 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 and we will constantly round the bases and we will grow our businesses slowly, securely, and while looking after our families. Which is why the business is able to last long term. Yeah. Right. So you always hear people saying consistency is key, you know, but everybody wants to get from zero to a billion overnight and it doesn't work that way especially yeah. if you don't have the foundational pieces in place. Yeah. Um, That's why I always say I work with, with, with solo printers as early in their journey as possible, preferably idea stage up to two years in business to teach them the basic foundational skills they need to first survive. Then we can talk about thriving. Yes, you want to have the big goals, but you have to be dealing with the day-to-day stuff too. If you don't make it, to the two-year mark or the five-year mark, you're never going to make it to the billionaire mark. And most businesses never will. And that's perfectly fine. You can run a nice, comfortable, small business that gives you the lifestyle that you want and more than pays your bills, but it's never going to put you on the Fortune 500. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what most businesses are. Unfortunately, the only ones we hear about are the ones that are laying off 900 people via Zoom last week. Right. Yeah. And and that's just another reason that we have small businesses that are starting up virtually overnight. Yeah. um, Because people are tired of living in that fear. I'm going to lose my job. Yeah. I'm either going to lose my job because the business is going to downsize because they've discovered 
how few employees they can actually do business with, or they've discovered that my job is totally unnecessary because of X, Y, Z. Or they're going to outsource it to India or Mexico or somewhere else or right. with all the tornadoes that we just had. And um, I was hearing about the one, the candle factory, and there's numerous reports of people were wanting to go home and all the supervisors saying, you leave, you're fired. So there's dead people because they're going, well, I can go home and be with my family or I can stay here and feed my family. That is a horrible place to be. It certainly is. And it's all too common of the conversations that people are having globally right now. Yeah. So share more about your program. I know you have a one-year program that is starting. Um, you have two groups that you want to start in January. Well, what, what I do, so there, there's two main things that I do. So I do a weekend small business class. It's 20 hours. It's a Friday night, Saturday, Sunday. So that if people are still with the job, because that's the best time to get them. Because I always go, if I could go back and talk to me one year before, oh man, I would have gotten a whole heck of a lot of things put in place that would have saved me, oh, so much time, money, and grief. So that's the best place. So if they're still, they got the normal J-O-B, they can fit it in and it's, it's intensive. It's all the foundational pieces that you need. But like so many good courses, you, you, get, you get all the information, you're all excited, I'm ready to take on the world. And then on Monday, you're back at the job and the baby's crying and the dog just threw up on the carpet. And what happens? Nothing changes. because And it just becomes another beautiful binder up on your shelf collecting dust. So what I do is I follow it up with a year-long group coaching program. It's not a video series. It's live. So we do it, I do them on Mondays and I have different groups. So um, we go through for a year, broken into four quarters, foundation, marketing systems and advisory team and financial. So we keep building up on your knowledge. But the big thing is you get the support and the accountability to actually get things done. And I've, I've taken so many courses and stuff myself over the years. I read voraciously. And I've been working with people for over 20 years, and I found that this is what works live. So you get that human interaction, you get to ask questions. Um, I've had so many people over the years build up incredible friendships and business relationships with the people they met in class that are still going 15 years later. So um, because we're coming up on January here right away, I've got what I call the Kickstart 2022 so I've got two groups starting in January where you're, you start with a small business class and then a week later we get into mastermind. So I've got two of those groups going and I've, I've, I've had so many people look at my stuff and I, I work with a lot of coaches as well. And they're going, you need to up your prices. And I'm going, yeah, I very well could, but I'm keeping them at this price for the simple fact that my mission is to help the little people get started. And I'm going, I never want any of my clients, my students to go, can I afford this course? Or is it going to cost like, is it going to be an issue on putting food on the table or making sure the mortgage is paid or the rents looked after? No, I and here's the other one, I charge in Canadian. <laughs> so if you're American, you are getting one heck of a deal. <laughs> because the Canadian dollar sucks right now in comparison to yours. Okay, so when they start with the live class, does this, <clears throat> excuse me, is, the, is it a virtual class or are they? Yeah, no, it's all on Zoom. So and I've been doing the the, the Zoom class. I, my goal was to always put it on virtual and then COVID hit. And I actually had an in class, in a uh, face-to-face class booked that, and everything got shut down. I'm going, well, guess we're getting this done right now. <laughs> so I took about 60 to 80 hours and just like updated everything and put it all together. I've had, I have clients coming from all over Canada, all over the United States. And I mean, it, I even have a few from Australia, which is even more fun because they've got the time difference. <laughs> like if I'm dealing with East coast, that's two hours. So I'm dealing with Australia. It's 15. Right. Right. I know there are Australians that are in some of the uh, Zoom calls that I've been in, and they're up at like two thirty in the morning. It's that important to them, you know. So yeah, that's the thing to 
to consider is where do you live in the world? And this is available. Well, this, this is one of the wonderful things like COVID has been horrible, but it's been really good in a few ways because they call it the great resignation. Cause there's a lot of people going, you know what, I'm not putting my life and my family at risk for the, for the garbage that you're treating me like and how poorly you're paying me and all of this stuff. Right. If my life is going to suck and I'm going to be broke no matter what I'm not doing it. Or they're going, I'm finally going to, I'm, I'm in enough pain that I'm going to make a change. Cause that that's a common one. Um, where, where I am, oil and gas is everything. And we've taken a beating on it. So there's so many, I've got a lot of clients that are engineers and stuff that are used to working in oil and gas downtown. And they've already been through a few rounds of layoffs because if you've been in the industry for 25 years, you've been laid off four times. Right. And they're going, I'm tired of this. I'm not going back to it. So even when they offer me the job and yes, it was good money, I don't want the the up and down with my life and the hassle. So they're starting up their businesses and doing different things. Um, I have a set of clients that they started a microbrewery because they were both in oil and gas and they are, they are killing it. They are doing so well and having so much fun. And now they are, they, they're working their butts off. Like they are not lazy. They're putting in a lot of hours, but they're happy. And they're building something and it's just, it's, it's wonderful to see. Like, so this is, this is a good thing in a lot of ways. And I've been talking with so many people. Can you imagine if COVID-19 happened 15 years ago before we had like Zoom and all the technology and stuff? Right. When COVID hit, I've been working at home for 12 years. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was barely a hiccup for me because I see clients over Zoom. They're literally all over Canada for me. And with my, with KSA, as long as you speak English, because I'm learning Spanish, but it's muy pequeña. As long as you speak English, business is business is business. When you get into the actual legal stuff and specific accounting practices that you have to do for the tax laws for your state, province, country, whatever, you always need to be dealing with the actual expert for that. But the basics of business, it doesn't matter even language wise. It's the same everywhere. If you've got the foundation, you can do it. Right, right. I'm just so excited about what you offer and that you are keeping in mind where people are financially, that a small business owner typically has very little to start with and just love that you are focused on helping to set up that foundation um, without taking them for a ride, which is very big. I'm very big on that. So where can people go to find out more about your class? And in so if, if, if anybody's interested in, like I said, the kickstart program for 2022, let's, let's start 2022 in a good place and end it in an amazing place. You go to my website. So it's KSA business and K is a KSA is kicks mass business.ca and then slash kickstart 2022. And we have all the information on there. And another reason why I priced it the way I did, because anybody who's looked at my program needs goes, this should be a $10,000 program at least. And I charge $1,575 Canadian. So if you're American, it's like 1200 bucks because I know how tight I was for money when I started. Mm -hmm. And there's so much stuff that I bootstrapped and I'm going, I know where you are. I've been there. I work with lots of people that way. And I, my conscience could not let me sleep if I had somebody that's stressing about, yeah, the course is worth it, but $5,000 or $7,500 or $10,000, or I've even had some people, great people, $50,000 a year to work with them. I'm going, not saying you're not worth it, but I'm going, that's a lot. Yeah. A lot of money. Right. Right. Well, I am just so grateful for you for, you know, giving back to the small business owners, remembering where you came from and how it felt for you. And one of the things that I offer, if, you, if you're thinking about it and you want to have an idea on, because everybody has strengths, everybody has strengths, you can build on those. And then everybody has weaknesses and areas that they're not even aware of. So if you go to ksabusiness.ca slash gift, you can download my solopreneur self-assessment. 
It's just a little questionnaire that you can go through. And like I said, figure out where you're strong, where you're weak, and where you don't even have a clue. And if you want to book like a 15 minute free consultation with me, we can, we can chat, not bragging, but I've been around for a while and I've seen so many different things and there is nobody, no one that is offering the way I'm doing it. I've seen some really good ones that are video programs. And while those do have some advantages, most of the time people never complete them. Right. Because we need someone to talk to you. Well, and, and one of the reasons, like I said, mine are scheduled, mine are live. The, the, the group coaching is live because then it becomes an appointment in your calendar. calendar. And you got used because we go through with the group. You're going, oh, okay, Angie, what happened to you, Angie? We've been talking. We didn't see you and stuff. So it's, it's a commitment where if it's the video and stuff, it can always be put off because it's always there. Yes. And I'm guilty of this too. I'm taking a wonderful course that I've been working on. It's a six week course, six weeks. That's it. I've been working on it for a year and a half, just being honest yeah. because I'll go through it. And then when I get pounded up with so much other stuff, I'm going, that's still there. I can get back to it. And I will, right. but there's so many people that they never get back to it. Or the moment they hit a snag or life gets busy, it just falls to the wayside where you go, no, this is what I am doing for the next year. And it's not. And another one that I've seen is there's so, there's so much time commitment that it's just overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're a, when you're a parent, especially with younger kids that right. <laughs> are a lot more work. I'm lucky. My daughter is 18 and I see her cause I know she eats. She's, <laughs> she's pretty darn self-sufficient now, but they're, they're wanting, oh, no, you have, if you don't have an extra 10 hours a week to commit to your, to doing this, you're not going to get anything out of it. Who has that much time? Like, right. yes, for my program to do it, it's about an hour a week total. So it's the steady, it's the ongoing, anybody can fit that in. It's in your schedule and you actually see the changes. And one of the, th one of the many things that I've seen because I've been running the group coaching program for about six years, I've been doing the small business class for about 18, is through the year of doing the group coaching, not only are they getting their business straightened out, but one of the biggest problems that a lot of people have is their family life is chaotic. Like it's, 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 it's insane. And they're going, I can't work on my business because my family's all a mess. Okay, well, then let's set some goals and put together some plans so we can get family life working. So then you've got the time and the energy and the mental capacity to work on your business. So it's not just a business. It's how can we make your life work better? Because you only have one life and your business fits into it. Your life doesn't fit into your business. Right. Right. There's no sense in having a business if everything that you do has to be worked around your business. It, your, yeah. your business has to fit with what you're doing or it's just not going to be sustainable because you're going to end up hating it. Well, yeah. And, and, and your family's going to end up hating it and all of this. Mm -hmm. And over, over my 20 years in business, like I said, started it, got pregnant, had my daughter, did all this stuff. We went through a major health issue with my husband that basically took me out of business for six weeks. And I, I was able to deal with that because it's my business and just got a hold of my clients and we worked around it and they were wonderful. And I was going through this and I'm going, how do people with jobs deal with a situation like this? And then I had a major health issue in 2000, beginning of 2019, where I basically couldn't get out of bed for two months. Because if I sat up, I'd pass out. <laughs> but I was still able, we made adjustments, but I'm still able to keep my business and stuff going. How do you do that with a job? How do you do that with a job? Right, right. Yeah, I have a son who, his employer is very clear you know, if you're not feeling well, stay home. And so when he's not feeling well, he stays home and then he gets threatened with losing his job. And I'm mm -hmm. like, how, how is that even still a thing when everyone is so conscientious about this bug that is traveling around the globe? Why are we still giving people a hard time when they're staying home because they don't feel well, they don't know what they have mm -hmm. and they're afraid that they're going to pass something on to somebody that could potentially kill them. And, and so, yeah, that is another reason why you have people quitting their jobs and yeah. say, I'm just not doing this anymore. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to start a business. 
I'm going to find something that I can do from home because I don't want to be out there amongst all of this stuff anymore. Our, um, our system is so broken and it's been getting progressively worse over the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I think it's actually a good thing now because it's starting to come to a head yeah. and people are, are going, no, this isn't worth it anymore. There's all this stuff going on and it's horrible and it's painful, but I'm kind of thinking it's kind of like child, not because I wanted to, trust me, I was all in favor of the drugs. I know, I know how this works, <laughs> but I couldn't get them because I just progressed too quickly and it was an awful thing. But then I had this beautiful little girl and I recovered and things were so much better. And I think that's kind of what we're going through right now. It's horrible and it's painful and it's messy and all this stuff. But I think it's coming to a head. And uh, we are definitely in transition as and a society. We need, we need to make it, we need to make it better. And it, it's not counting on the multinational corporations that only care about giving bonuses to their C-suite and dividends to their shareholders right that are that are the top 1%. No, let's start looking after real people. Let's start looking after our communities, let's start looking after our families. And the only way that happens is small business. 10 employees and under 78% of all jobs. It's not it's not the Microsofts, it's not the Amazons right. that are running the economy. Those are the ones that are ruining the economy. Mm -hmm. Small business is the one that's making it. Right. Right. Which has been true from the beginning. Yeah. But it's what, what does the media tell you? It's all the big, it's, it's, it's the job creators that don't create any jobs. Totally get you. Yes. <laughs> so I definitely think that anybody listening to this episode needs to do that assessment and schedule some time with you to chat. Um, make sure that what you're offering is a good fit for them. Um, and then get enrolled in your program, get their business foundation set, get their business going. I also love that you have the accountability piece in there um, and the social piece because we are all so separated right now. We, we don't have a lot of people spending a lot of time in the same space socializing. And so being able to do that virtually in your course with like-minded people who are all building small businesses I think it's just an amazing uh, platform. And like you said, you have people making connections. Um, collaboration in small business is very important. Yeah. Um, so they get to have that built in to your, your long course. And I just, I love everything that you're doing, Tammy. Thank um, you. I'm very excited that, <laughs> that my podcast has brought us together. I don't think you and I would have ever have met any other way. And I'm but just one of the joys of, of social media. It, there's a lot of evil about social media, but there's also a lot of good. I've met some absolutely incredible that I've ended up meeting in real life as I've been traveling and stuff. And, and, and one, one of the other major pluses about doing the small business class and the, the mastermind, the group coaching all together is you really do get to know people. And one of the things when you are first starting your business you don't typically know a lot of small business people, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, your friends, family, your social circle are all employees. And while they're wonderful, moving from an employee mindset over to a business owner mindset, like it's, it's, it's night and day difference. The group of friends that I had when I first started my business and who I was socializing with and spending my time with two years after completely changed. And a lot of the people that when I started my business and all that, that we're still friends. A lot of them are my clients. So mm -hmm. all that, but we can't really socialize anymore. We can talk about our kids and that's about it because I can't talk about being in a job and okay, I have right. to put in for my vacation time and, oh, am I going to get a 2.3% cost? 15%. Woo I'm excited. Are you? Um, <laughs> and if I start talking about business, they'd look at me like I was speaking Klingon. So when you're in the small business class and you're, you're in, in mastermind and you're being surrounded by other people that are learning and growing and going through a lot of the, the same things, you are finding, and I know this is not the politically correct term anymore, but I don't know what else to say. You're finding people that are in your tribe. They're on the same journey. They're going to the same 
similar direction. They all have different products and services and stuff, but they have a much better understanding of the voices that are going off in your head and the, and the fears and the challenges that you're dealing with rather than your best friend that is in loves their job or is too scared to leave it. <laughs> right. Right. I totally agree. Yeah. It, it is a completely different um, realm, if you will. Um, so having a conversation with that small business owner who gets all of the challenges um, and doesn't follow that conversation with, well, why did you start a business in the first place? Um, <laughs> Just go get yourself a safe, secure job. At least you'll have that regular paycheck and you won't have to deal with all of this stress. Exactly. No, you'll just deal with different stress. <laughs> exactly. You'll deal with different stress and lose a lot of the freedom that a small business does give you. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of flexibility in having your own business. You know, mm -hmm. um, I've talked with a lot of midwives who have always struggled with the women that cannot afford their services and and what do what do I do? I've got my own bills to pay. I'm like, you have so many options and you get to choose who to gift your services to, who to reduce your fee for, who to barter with or do a partial barter with. There's so many options Yep. when you're a small business owner. You don't have someone saying, well, you can't give them that because, you know, it's going to impact this bottom line over here. Um, and it's important, in my opinion, for every business to be bartering or donating or giving in some way to some percentage um, as a way of giving back to those that you know would benefit. Absolutely 100%. We have to be aware of how much we can give because some people are so generous. Yeah, I just want to help everybody. No, you can't help everybody because like your midwife said, I still have bills to pay. But even back when I was starting and like I'm going in, in small business, you eat what you kill. You know, kill, you know, eat. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. But there are like, I'm a huge fan of bartering and trading services. And there are some people, as long as they're willing to do the work and they appreciate it and they're not wasting my time. Okay. I will bend over backwards to help you. And I'm there, I will take on a few freebie clients a year because that's my way of giving back. As long as they're willing to do the work, they appreciate it and they're not wasting my time. You mess up right. on one of those, you're gone. Totally agree. Yep. Yes. And then it, has it, to be it comes commitment. back to you ener energetically. And, and I'm all for like, I'm, I'm, I'm a very happy atheist, but I'm all for tithing. Um, I give money to a few very good charities. I tithe my time. I volunteer and do different things. It's about what positive impact do you want to have in the world? And how can you put it out there while still making sure that you're looking after your business, your family, and your income? It's not an either or. It's how do we do both? Right, right. Because you can't give begrudgingly. No. And receive That's not back. giving. Exactly. That's, and yeah, right. that's not giving. Right. You can't say, well, I give 10% of my services for free and I hate it. Because that doesn't that doesn't bring anything back to you. Um, it has no. to be in the right mindset with the right emotions attached to it um, in order for it to come back to you. And a lot of times it comes back to you exponentially. Um, oh, it, it does. And and you also like giving from the right place feels wonderful. Feels wonderful. And and I've I I like and even for the people that that are paying me. I still put as much out as I possibly can somewhat joke. I'm going, I have a greedy, motivated self-interest to see you do well. <laughs> because I don't, I don't want you going, well, I took this woman's course and it was, look at. Right, right. Because as a small business owner, your name is on the line. Yeah. Right. Everything that you do, your name is on the line. And it's really important to keep your name on the positive side of things as much as possible. As much as possible. No matter what, you're human, you're going to make mistakes. You're never going to be able to make everybody happy. If you're making everybody happy, you're doing absolutely nothing. Right. <laughs> but if you're coming from the right place and, and you're constantly building your skills and you're doing your best and you're improving, you are on the upward trajectory. And reputation is everything. And it comes back to you. 
like, so with my, with my main business, because my background is financial services, that's what I've been doing for 28 years. And then I split my business into two so I can focus on KSA, the small business consulting and coaching, because that's a lot more fun. <laughs> it is. It's a way, way more fun. I don't have to market for my business because all of my business comes in from, I do speaking. So people come to me or referrals and a referral means they phone or email me and ask for an appointment and say, I've been sent by this person. I've been told you are the absolute best and I am to do exactly as I am told. Bonus. I don't have to cold call. I don't have to go beat the street. This is what comes to me. You can have your business that way as well by doing it right and for the right reasons. I love that. I love that. Word of mouth is from the beginning of time been the best way to market. You just, you know, Mm -hmm. You are yourself. You do what you claim to that you do. Yeah. You do it well, and people are going to send others your way. So, and important. another major perk: you get to choose who you do business with. That's right. One of one of the many many things I love about doing what I do. I love my clients. I always say I wouldn't work with anybody. I wouldn't have to my house for a barbecue. And I've had so many of my clients over the years. Like literally, they'll come. I usually have a, a goal setting party in between Christmas and New Year's and everybody brings something and we just, I won't do business with people I don't like. I don't have to put up, I don't have to grin and bear it. And while somebody, while some Ivanka is being horrible, no, who do you want to work with? Who do you want to attract in? Who do you want to help? Right. right. That's exactly it. And when you have things built correctly, then you have that ability. And, and instead of feeling like, oh, I got to take everybody that comes my way, even if they're not my person. Well, absolutely not. And yeah, that's just not a good idea in any business. You know, when doing um, home births, it was very important. They had to have a, a consultation with me. It was going to be at least an hour of just sitting and talking, getting to know each other. Yeah. Um, you know, me asking them questions, them asking me questions, because if it's not a good fit, it's not a good fit and it's not going to work. Anytime you ever use this to override the screaming in your belly button, there's going to be a huge chunk taken out of your back end and you're not going to lose any weight. <laughs> That's right. And you're going to regret it. You're going to look oh, back you and say, I guarantee you're, you're going that? to regret it. And trouble is when I've used this to override my belly button. My belly button has never been wrong. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, I'm 100% with you. I'm so glad that you came and you did this episode with me. I'm excited to get this out to everybody. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. To learn more about me, your Fairy God Mentor, simply go to AngieTaylorFairyGodMentor.com.